I'm Leah Lawrence. And I'm her husband, Mitch Lawrence. And you are listening to the Southern Spirits Podcast, where I regale my husband with Southern stories of the macabre, creepy, and strange. And I drink. What are you drinking tonight, Mitchell? Our beer tonight is Coffee is for Closers, Iced Coffee Porter. It's from Full Steam Brewery in Durham, North Carolina. It's 6% alcohol by volume. Nothing on the cans really to speak of, so let's read the online description. A smooth, semi-sweet porter brewed with cold-pressed Muddy Dog Roasting Company Sumatra and Larry's Coffee Bean Martin Blend. The beer's grain bill features toasted malts and golden oats, softening the mouthfeel. Now lactose-free, put that coffee down. End quote. Uh, that's from, of course, the movie uh, Glengarry Glen Ross, where the name of the beer comes from, Coffee is for Closers. Leah, have you ever seen that movie? I have. It's a good movie. Alec Baldwin's part, where this speech comes from, where the beer's name comes from, is not even in the original uh, you know, work. It was just added for the movie. Yep. Did you know that? I did. I'm sure you knew that. Most people probably didn't know that or have not seen the movie because it's one of those artsy-fartsy ones that uh, most people don't care about. Um, in the description there, that uh, Muddy Dog Roasting Company and Larry's Coffee, those are both local in Durham. Well, in North Carolina, I know of. Um, so they used local coffee manufacturers uh, to make their coffee porter, which is interesting. I think it's cool. Yep. And uh, what I have to say is that it's this beer is heavy and uh, dark, very dark, and I gave it a D-word rating. It grew on me a lot. It's uh, it's real good. For those of you who don't know, uh, don't worry. It's uh, it's just a good beer. Um, I do. I really didn't like it at first, but it did grow on me. It's relaxing and comforting. It is very heavy and sweet though, so um, you could have like maybe two of them and call it. Quits. I love it, but I love porters, so mm-hmm. I'm real biased to like a heavy kind of little bit sweet kind of beer. Yeah, um, and it's definitely that. I, I love porters. I like stouts a lot. Um, the darker the beer or the more sour, light, fruity kind of stuff. That mm. in-between standard American wheat ale kind of stuff I don't care for. Mm. But like if it's real dark or it's real light, um, I'm there for it. <laughs> you're a very, middle ground. You're you very know. much an extremes person. Yeah. When yeah. it comes to beer, it turns out. So. Leah, only a Sith deals in extremes. I'm fine with that. Yeah. Call well, me Darth Leah. I'll, I, I'll, I'll I, deal. I gave it an 8.5 out of 10. I enjoyed it very much. Um, and that's really all I have to say, Leah. Do you, would you like to say anything else about it? Uh, no, it's good beer. Okay. Enjoyed. Well, our shot in the dark for tonight is peach tea whiskey, produced and bottled by Stillhouse Spirits Company in Columbia, Tennessee. 34.5% alcohol by volume. And this is an interesting one. Let's read the oil can. <laughs> You ready? Stillhouse is crafted using our proprietary all-natural recipe and estate-grown corn. It's distilled in a traditional copper whiskey still, then charcoal filtered. Oh my god, I'm fucking up. Let's try that again. It's distilled in a traditional copper whiskey still, then charcoal filtered for superior quality and taste, allowing the natural sweetness of the corn to shine through. A remarkably mellow flavor and smooth finish makes this a truly versatile, clear spirit. End quote. Um, we said let's read the oil can because it comes in its own little interesting, uh, you know, old timey oil can type thing. Um, I guess that's that's what Leah said, and I was like, what would you call this? What what is this thing? It's in the same size as a little like a, a vintage motor oil can. Yep. Uh, yeah, like an old aluminum can. And mm-hmm. it's really interesting, really cool. And uh, this thing smells like straight up actual moonshine, like made in someone's backyard in the ground somewhere. <laughs> um, but when you taste it, it's surprisingly like tea bitter, you know, like a black tea kind of, um, which makes sense because it's peach tea whiskey. It's sweet. And um, I would I would feel free to try it by itself. Because I did with ice, and I was like, oh, this smells awful. I'm going to hate it. I took a sip, and I was like, oh, that's pretty okay. It's not bad. 
it tastes good, but it is deceptive because it's yeah. like you taste it, you're like, oh, this is pleasant, and then you swallow it, and it burns all the way fucking yeah. down. This like, is straight white lightning. You don't taste the alcohol, but you feel it mm-hmm. real hard when you swallow it. Yeah, if any of you have ever been to a, uh, a moonshine distiller or anything like, you know, a, a Old Smoky or something, and you try their just plain one, like their white lightning, whatever they want to call it, this is that's what this smells like, but then it's kind of sweet and bitter interestingly and it's not bad uh i gave it an 8.5 out of 10 on ice because it's really not bad i don't know that i'd do it again but feel free to try it by itself and um while we're in the middle of this fucking shutdown the stores are out of ginger ale which is weird to me so i mixed it with uh we found something very interesting sprite ginger didn't know that was a thing but y'all it's a real good soda it is really good yeah it's incredible. It's like Sprite with just a tiny bit of ginger ale. It's not quite ginger ale. It's still real sweet like Sprite. Um, but it also got an 8.5 out of 10 mixed with the peach tea whiskey. It's not great, but uh, not as good as it would be with regular ginger ale, I think. Yeah. So 8.5 out of 10 overall. And that's it for the alcohols, Leah. What are we doing on our first episode back in a while? Because well, we did that special and then we had you being sick last week. So. Oh, yeah. Um, and speaking of, update, I'm better. Um, I'm yep. not running a fever anymore. Uh, so that's great. Mm-hmm. I feel fine. Um, I'm doing okay. Uh, still haven't gotten any test results back because yep. thanks, Alabama. Yep. Um, but, you know, for the most part, I'm, I'm down. I'm cool. I'm drinking beer. So we're good. Um, we've we've passed <laughs> the scary part of it for me particularly. Yeah, that's how um, we know Leah's better. She'll drink a beer. I drink a beer. Yeah. Yeah. No. So if anybody was worried about me, which I doubt anybody was, but yeah. um, you know, if you were, I'm fine. I'm good. We don't know what I had, um, and we may never know. Yeah. <laughs> going at the speed of of. I don't know, a crawling snail on getting results back. But it's been at 10 any days. Rate, yeah, it's been 10 days today, um, and my doctor's office is closed uh, tomorrow as well. So who knows when we'll yep. get those those results. But at any rate, I'm doing better. I'm good. Mm-hmm. We're still fucking quarantined. But, you know, yep. making the best of it because we have all this liquor that we bought way before everything shut down. Mm-hmm. So, Yeah, we were, uh, Leah was all better, and I haven't been sick at all this whole time. So just, and we're not going to give a lot of details or anything, but we were told to come back to work on yeah. Friday. Yeah. We went back and within an hour, Leah was told, no, you should go home. <laughs> and then I told my supervisor what happened in Leah's office. And she went, let me ask our building director. And 30 minutes later, I was told, yeah, you go home too. <laughs> so yeah. we don't get to go home until... Go to work. So, yeah, or no, go to work. We have to stay home until someone decides that i'm allowed to go back to work so um anyway that's what's going on but thankfully we're both salaried employees so (laughs) yeah running out of leave time too yeah running out of leave time but you know for now we're still getting paid so knock Mm. on wood they get their shit together and we find out if i have the corona or not um (laughs) had had because like i said i'm i'm much better i'm good Mm -hmm. um so anyway that is leah's medical saga real quick (laughs) Um, but at any rate, uh, we have a new Possum Passel member. Oh, uh, new Possum Passel member. Yes. Sad news, um, the tablet is uh, not charged, and I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> so no and we effect. sat here watching Animal Crossing videos for like 20 minutes, waiting for yep. it to charge, and it did not. So Yeah, well, let me just, I'll do the monkey there. Ah, ah. That is not a monkey, that's <laughs> that a parrot. Is that is a parrot. Close. <laughs> <laughs> that was not a monkey. Y'all, we've been locked in this fucking house for two weeks now. Making monkey noises (laughs) that sound suspiciously like parrots. (laughs) <laughs> uh, anyway, but welcome, Becky, to the Possum Passel. You are awesome. Becky. You're wonderful. And as soon as I get co- confirmation from the government that I'm not contagious, I will send you out some stickers and it will be great. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was actually just thinking we should get all of the Patreon stuff done, but they might go out of the house with Rona. Yeah. So, let's so like I said, that. I'm not doing anything. Shit, I'm not touching any of our Patreon anything until we know whether or not I've got the Rona. So I didn't think I'm about sorry. That. There will probably be a delay. Um, I apologize. But once again, I'm not allowed out of the house. So Well, let me just say, everything else is delayed. Yeah. So, you know. Sorry. Get over it, I guess. But anyway, <laughs> thank you so much. Y'all are awesome. And if anybody else wants to contribute to, uh, you know, our show, um, we that's would greatly great. appreciate it. 
It would be awesome. Um, we know things are financially iffy for everybody right now. So if you yeah. can't, that's perfectly fine. All you've got to do is just share our podcast with one of your friends that is mm-hmm. also stuck at home with nothing to fucking do. Preferably um, your wealthy friends. Yeah, your wealthy <laughs> friends that do have... No. Um, no, literally just any of your friends. Share our podcast if you think they would enjoy it. Um, we really would love to just see a little bit of growth during this time of terror um yeah. so yeah if you want to just share it it would really help us out uh we appreciate growth during everything. this time of terror is the name of an awesome porno <laughs> ew <laughs> <laughs> don't sign me up for that one um anyway but anyway thank you and if anybody else wants to join the possum passel uh patreon.com slash southern spirits podcast and you can do that at whatever level is comfortable for you mm-hmm. um okay. for your money <laughs> As soon as we get out of quarantine, we might be able to buy some more beer. Yeah. Oh, shit. I didn't think about that. If it's not fixed in like a month, uh, we may not have beer. Yeah. Well, I mean, liquor stores have been classified as essential. That's true. But I still don't know if we should be going anywhere. You know, I don't know. We'll see. It's always shifting. So if we don't have any alcohol recommendations for you, Mm -hmm. that's what's going on. But once again, we're going to try to keep it as normal as possible. Yeah. Um, But anyway, so would you like to hear our sassy Southern saying of the evening? I sure would. It's been so long since we did this. I forgot that was happening. (laughs) So, yeah. All right. Well, uh, the saying that I picked is one of my dad's favorites, Mm -hmm. and it's one that he said to me and my brother so often as kids that it just makes me laugh anytime he says it now just because i don't know it's funny um but he would always call something useless as the teats on a boar hawk <laughs> as in oh, let me God. use it as a sentence <laughs> sorry this oil can that this moonshine came in is useless as the teats on a boar hog. It's hard to pour out of this thing. That's what I'm saying. It's hard <laughs> Those to pour movie out of tickets teats. that you bought, useless as the teats on a boar hog. <laughs> movie tickets for this time? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. I get it. Unless, oh. Well, I mean, can you go if the movie has less than 25 people in it? No. Uh, well, in Alabama, they just shut down all non-essential businesses, and that oh, is yeah. not essential. So, The big problem with this is that I'm going to close it back. The Y'all hear can? this fucking terrible noise <laughs> that I'm screwing the lid back on it? Yeah, that's oh. just metal on metal, like cap was. But anyway... Oh. So, yeah, um, useless is the teats on a boar hog. Uh, that is one of my favorite sayings because, once again, I got told I was as useless as the teats on a boar hog very often as a kid when I wouldn't. Jesus, that's why you're in therapy. <laughs> no, it was always. No, it probably wasn't always said with love. But, yeah. you know, when we wouldn't clean up or we wouldn't. Like, we would spend all day in the summer at home doing literally nothing when there was so much shit we could have gotten done, yeah. you know. God, y'all are useless as the teats on a boar hog. So, mm-hmm. yeah. anyway, um, that was my childhood trauma. How are you doing, Mitchell? We've talked. We've discussed <laughs> my childhood trauma. <laughs> Reasons that I should be in therapy. <sighs> I know a good one. Yeah. Um, all right. So you know a good reason I should be in therapy? No, I know a good therapist. <laughs> oh. I yeah. probably know a couple reasons you should be in therapy, yeah. too, but for the I most part, say, I just have therapist recommendations. My main reason to be in therapy is my boar hog teeth. <laughs> when I was born, the doctor was like, God, this kid's going to be useless. <laughs> Look at his boar hog teeth. Oh, Ugh. gross. Anyway. Yeah. So and way, just to explain that, if nobody understands yeah. what a boar hog is, it's a male pig and all males have that are mammals have nipples. And, you know, dude nipples, they're completely useless. Why didn't he say useless as my teats? What? Why didn't he say useless as my teats? Because the, he had phrase, teats too. the phrase is useless as the teats on a boar hog. Well, this saying is fucking stupid. Yes. And I hate it. I'm sorry. All well, right. Well, are you ready for the very first story of our, our, uh, our episode? Yeah. Okay. I sure am. All right. Well, we are going to Chapel Hill, Tennessee, and we are talking about The ghost lights of Chapel Hill. Oh, more ghost lights. That's fun. More ghost lights. Yay. Yay. I don't have sound effects. (laughs) I did the rooster. That'll do it. At least you kind of figured out an animal, though. Still sounds like a parrot, though. (laughs) That's not Uh, good. Maybe you're doing a parrot's impression of a rooster. Yeah. 
It's a parrot dressed up as a rooster. <laughs> All right. So um, the Chapel Hill ghost lights are pretty famous around here. Um, if you know anything about local folklore, um, Chapel Hill is just south of Nashville. So it's between where we live and Nashville. And mm-hmm. I've been to Chapel Hill before. Mm-hmm. Um, Chapel Hill doesn't have a whole lot in it. Um the only other thing of note, really, is that uh, Nathan Bedford Forrest is buried there, but, like, who oh, cares? Really? I mean, I don't. Uh, no, not for me. But, anyway, um, there is this old legend there, and there are a bunch of different varieties of this legend, just like any of the little ghost stories. Everybody's got their own particular variety that they want to tell you, but I'm going to tell you the one that's the most famous and the one that I've heard told before. Okay. Um, so... Um, there is a railroad track running through Chapel Hill, um, and it was sort of one of the main branches for, for rail travel back in the day. Um, and there was this old man and he was working as a signalman along the tracks and it was real late one night and it was raining and it was foggy and it was dark and he was carrying just a single lantern, you know, a, a, line like train lantern you know the hangy down lantern you've seen them um but he was he was hanging hanging on to this lantern Mm -hmm. and he had it in front of him trying to look down the tracks um and and see what was going on and uh he was checking the line making sure there was nothing on it that would derail a train and he was you know going back checking his his station to get back to to the signal like station thing. okay um and it was really ra- it was really rainy and it was super slick out on the tracks and he slipped and he knocked himself unconscious on the rail um and he lay there for a while um but unfortunately he did not wake up in time for the train that was coming oh no and the train obviously did not know that there was a man passed out on the track in front of him. And uh, since they were unable to stop, the train ran over his body. Mm. Um, So shot in the dark. Okay, I don't have it. So I'll click, click, boom. (laughs) Done. Still sounded like a parrot. (laughs) Uh (laughs) Click, click, boom. Stop. <laughs> All right. Uh, where did the train wheels sever his body in two? Oh, God damn. Leah. Was it A, at his neck, B, at his chest, or C, at his waist? Well, in two, so it's going to have to be his waist, right? Well, uh, just two separate pieces. Okay. Well, I'm gonna, I'm severing still going it any place would do that. I'm still going at waist. Well, you're incorrect. No. Oh, uh, it's severed. <laughs> That was the parrot. <laughs> uh, it decapitated him. Oh, that's sad. Yeah. Are you taking your shot? Oh, yeah. You want me to go ahead? Okay. Let me open a, a Sprite Ginger to wash it down with. Oh, shit. Bang the fuck out of my microphone. I'm sorry. All right. Well, you can continue while I do this. All right. Well, uh, it, it cut him in two at the neck, and it decapitated him. And uh, so... People went out looking for him because they never found him. Or, you know, he didn't come back. And they... Was that terrible? It's not terrible, but it's fucking rough. Yeah. (laughs) Was that your dog impression? (laughs) Rough. It was a parrot doing a dog. Mm. All right, so... That's another weird porno. (laughs) Stop. Um... But anyway, they found his body, and most of his body was intact, but his head was missing, and they oh. never found it. Um, they never found it? They never found his head. I guess the train just carried it on with Well, him. then they don't know if it was cut off or not. Well, um, it was no longer on his body. <laughs> the fuck? They don't know. It could have just got up and walked off. <laughs> but anyway, Little the legend feet. is that his ghost still walks the track his headless ghost walks the tracks in that area carrying his lantern and searching for the head Mm -hmm. and the lights that you will see there in chapel hill are his lantern um you know walking along which is very similar to the uh gurdon lights in arkansas where the guy got murdered on the track (laughs) and he's still got his his light out there are you okay my my voice cracked (laughs) i it ha- like I went to speak and everything just tightened up. I might be allergic to this whiskey. <laughs> I don't know what happened. 
Oh, oh, but anyway, so like I said, he's got this light just wandering out on the track. And there are videos and photographs of the uh, Chapel Hill lights. Uh, you can look at it on YouTube, as always, should you care to. Um, but it oh. is. It's just one of those same ghost light phenomenons that happen across the railroad track, just like in Arkansas. Um, and just like in Arkansas, a lot of other weird sort of things have been known to happen out there. A lot of people have reported like oh. UFO sightings in the area, in the sky. Um, other people have reported that there's actually a phantom train that goes along with the headless brakeman guy mm -hmm. um and they say that um you know when the conditions are similar to what it was the night that he was run over um you'll see the phantom train and you know then you'll see the lights and all of that stuff um and of course because party poopers are party poopers um the skeptics obviously have some thoughts as to what this light and the light i do believe is real because i mean there's there's footage of it and stuff and it's been reported in this area for a very long time as a an actual physical phenomenon that you can go like it it isn't just a oh spooky apparition one time it's a repeatable something that happens all the time it's swamp gas isn't it um, some people say something like that, but for the most part, a lot of people believe it's the reflective eyes um, of a barn owl. Oh, um, so barn owls, yeah. when they swoop in, they go really low and they sort of do like a side to side kind of sweeping motion to, to flush yeah. out uh, like mice and stuff like that out of a field. Um, and a lot of people think that people are seeing the glowing orbs of... Um, the the reflective eyes of of a barn owl mm -hmm. um also some people think that it's uh piezoelectricity just like they thought it was in Gurdon. yeah so the piezoelectric hootenanny could be in full effect in uh in tennessee as well yeah um but uh there are some issues with people going out there to look at the lights though because it got pretty popular at one point in time i believe the town has gotten bigger lately mm. and it's less of a thing to like go out and drink and look at the lots <laughs> but it used to be a thing to go out and drink and look at the lots and the go. crowds would get kind of rowdy um and they'd sort of bring guns to see if they could shoot the lot down um it got weird out there because it's country folk with with liquor and getting bored. I mean, it <laughs> it happens occasionally. Sorry, all it just does. Yeah. Um, and apparently, according to some of the information that I found, um, one person was actually killed in, in Bedford County uh, out on the railroad tracks because he was so intently following this light and looking at this light that he did not hear a train coming and he got hit by the, the train as he was looking at this light. Um, yeah. So at least one person confirmed has been killed just looking at and looking for this light. Um, Jesus. Are we sure that the light he saw wasn't just the train coming at him? It's very fucking possible. Yeah. I mean, um, I don't know. But I, I couldn't tell, because that seems like something like that if you were kind of inebriated out there looking in the woods at something that, you know, oh, yeah, this light coming at me is so shiny. And then, like, you get hit by a train. I don't know. But <laughs> none of the reports <laughs> none of the reports that I found said anything about this guy being inebriated or anything else like that. But anyway, this guy did, in fact, get killed looking for this light. So if you're out there legend tripping in Tennessee... <laughs> Please be on the lookout for fucking trains. Yeah. I've been very, very, very drunk before, and I've never been entranced by a light. Like, I mean, I, I'm one of the lucky ones, though, where I've never, like, once or twice, I've full-on blacked out. But most of the time, I'll fall asleep before anything like that happens. So, I'm just saying, I've been real fucking hammered before, and I've never been like, oh... There's a cool light out there. Turns out it's a train. <laughs> never happened to me. I I personally stopped drinking before. I, I've never blacked out. I've never not remembered something. Like, I'm real good with alcohol. Like, I don't... Mm -hmm. Like, I just... My body physically will not keep drinking if I'm that drunk. I just... I can't do it. My it's body rare will for not. Me. 
Um, I've rare. never blacked out. I've never had any issue like that. But I'm a very tactile person. So mm-hmm. when I am inebriated in any way, I like to touch things with interesting textures. <laughs> um, I get really interested in mm. patterns and shapes and stuff like that. So I could definitely see myself like just staring at a light for a while. But... I completely think that I would be able to say, oh, fuck, that's a train and step to the side. Let's try. Let's test it out. No, I'm good. <clears throat> we can try. Um, yeah, I, I just don't know that that would happen to me or to any sane person most of the time. But, you know, what are you going to do? Well, it also could have been shrooms. You don't know. Yeah, they could have not been drunk. There. Yeah, they could have definitely had something There are else other intoxicants. On. Some hallucinogens. Yep. Right, right. Was well, that it for story number one? That is it for story number one. That was the ghost lights of Chapel Hill, Tennessee. Well, it was fun. It yeah. was enthralling. Did uh, Nathan Bedford Forrest play any part in it, or is it just his hometown? Well, I mean, that's just where he's buried, and it's oh, Bedford buried, County. I mean. Yeah. So that's, that's it. it. Just just the founder of the Ku Klux Klan yeah. is buried there. Pretty much. Good on you, Tennessee. Good on you. <sighs> anyway. <laughs> All right, so are you ready for our second story of the evening? Yep, I sure am. Excellent. Well, we're going to Natchez, Mississippi, and we are going to be talking about the King's Tavern. Yay, I have a fraternity brother from Natchez, Mississippi. That's the only reason I know that. Like, I would have never heard of Natchez. Mitchell, we have talked about Natchez, Mississippi, like three or four times on this podcast before. I don't think that's true. Very specific. I'm actually going to reference episode number two. Real soon, so... Doubt. Doubtful Leah that this happened. <laughs> All right, whatever. Okay. We'll see. All right, so... We'll see. Um, King's Tavern is about 230-plus years old-ish. They're not sure the exact date that it was built, but it was built in the late 1700s. Okay. Um, the tavern is located at 619 Jefferson Street in Natchez, Mississippi, and it is now a fancy bar and grill restaurant kind of thing. Yay, um, I love those things. Yeah, and uh, it... <laughs> I love a good bar and grill. <laughs> bar and grill situation, you know. It's called the King's Tavern. Uh, yeah, and their, their website does not mention at all any of the hauntings, but it is one of the most haunted places in Mississippi, according to the internet um and this is one that i had heard of previous to like even starting this this has been on my list for a while so oh um so originally the king's tavern was made as a house for um like soldiers and stuff like that in the revolutionary war at fort panmure um and it was built there and out of the materials it was made because there wasn't a local sawmill and the materials were brought in because so Natchez is sort of located on the river and people would ship goods down river the um, Mississippi River right yeah okay they would ship stuff down river um and that they were shipping things on these big flat bed barges, you know what I mean? Yes. And then once they would get it down to Mississippi, they would dismantle them because you couldn't, you know, sail them back up the river because you didn't have steamboats at the time. Um, so they would just dismantle these barges and they would sell the barges off um, for building materials. Um, nice. And so that's what this whole sort of house was originally built out of, uh, was these big flat boards that were from from these flatbed barge boats Mm -hmm. um and uh you know they were easily obtained and then a lot of it was bricked up with locally made bricks as well and and that style of brick was really common in the area at the time um but after the revolutionary war ended the fort wasn't needed anymore. Um, it was no longer being occupied. So in 1789, there was a man from New York named Richard King, and he was pretty wealthy, and he decided to move his family all the way to Natchez, and he bought the home, and he turned it into a tavern slash inn, yield Airbnb kind of situation. Awesome. Um, and he actually became pretty popular in the area because... Uh, he also, you know, would collect mail. Because it was um, also a brothel. It was not. Ah, uh, um, damn. But he would, 
he would collect mail and stuff like that, and it was a place where you could ship and deliver things to that people could actually fucking find. Um, <laughs> and so, uh, you know, he became sort of a hub of the community there. Um, oh, and God, that's another porno. It became... The hub of the community. Gross. Um, it became sort of just a social gathering spot. It was a, a bar, you know, in thing. You know, it was a nice mm-hmm. place. Um, and so he became really rich off of that stuff. Um, but unfortunately, as we have talked about previously uh, about the Natchez Trace, um, that whole area was really overrun with outlaws and criminals. Um, and in particular, the Hart Brothers that you will be familiar with if you've listened to episode two, A Totally Useful Skull. Um, oh, I remember those people. Yes. Uh, he's the one who ended up oh. getting his head uh, nailed to a tree as a warning to other oh, yeah. people to, like, don't be a fuckhead around here. I remember that. Which one? The tavern owner? No, the Harps. The, the Harp yeah. Brothers. That's okay. Yeah. yeah. The Harp yeah, Brothers yeah. feature in one of the stories that I'm about to tell you. Yeah. So that was in Natchez? Yes. It I was. Don't think so, so Natchez is the beginning of the Natchez Trace, which is right. that trail. Um, that starts in Natchez and goes up through Tennessee and anyway. Um, Accurate. Yeah. And so, uh, <laughs> like, this is the beginning of that trail. And they were famous for being highwaymen and robbing everybody on the Natchez Trace. Um, and so the Hart brothers were, you know, around there and they stayed there a lot and spent a lot of their ill gotten gains at that particular place. Um, and. Yeah, they robbed lots of people in the area, but they were very wealthy and they were staying at the King's Inn one night, uh, the King's Tavern, and uh, they were spending money and hanging out. And, you know, there were two brothers, the Harp brothers, Big Harp and Little Harp. Um, Yeah, yeah. I remember that. Um, And so they were staying in one of the rooms in the attic. And there was also another woman in another one of those rooms uh, that was a young lady that had a newborn baby with her and the baby wouldn't shut the fuck up it was loud it was fussy it was a fucking baby babies do that shit um and she was trying to just sort of make it be quiet sort of calm it down but it was an infant and she wasn't doing great at it and the baby kept crying and the baby kept screaming and she kept trying to get it to quiet down but Big Harp in the next room had a fucking nuff, was done. Absolutely mm-hmm. done with I'll the like noise, it. with everything. He was just a complete asshole, had probably drank quite a bit at this point of the night. And he uh, goes, he busts into her room, uh, you know, just sees the baby and the mom. He grabs the infant baby and he grabs the baby by its feet and just swings it into the brick wall. Uh uh-uh. uh. Um, yeah, and is the this baby, a real story or is this like folklore? It's folklore, but this guy is known to have done all sorts of heinous shit. Yeah. So this would not surprise me if it had happened at some point in time. I don't like it. No. I don't like it. Um so obviously I mean I hate babies, but goddamn. Yeah, you can't do that to babies. No, don't you do just that. can't. They're fucking babies. <laughs> what is your problem? Um <laughs> Ugh. Anyway, but obviously, you know, the baby immediately died. And so the mother was absolutely like losing her fucking shit because, I mean, someone just murdered her baby. Um, and anyway, uh, they say that the mother ended up killing herself as well because she was so grief stricken over what had just happened. Um, and so the ghost of the mother and the infant are both seen in the upper levels of the King's Tavern. Um, they say that you'll hear the baby crying, um, just sort of here and there, just this random, you know, infant squalling kind of sound. And then occasionally you'll hear the mother's crying as well. Um, I don't believe they are ever seen as like, uh, like apparitions, but it's more the sound. Uh, that you hear from that particular haunting. Uh. Um, and then another ghost situation uh, that happened and is pretty famous about this particular place. So 
the man that owned it, uh, his name is Richard King, hence the name The King's Tavern. Oh, interesting. Um, and he, you know, was super wealthy, and the more money that he got, the more fancy he thought he was, and he thought that he could do just whatever the fuck he wanted, basically. And so he was married and had kids and stuff like that, but, I mean, he wanted a little bit of a side piece. And instead of Gross. a side piece his own fucking age, he <laughs> hired a 16-year-old girl oh. uh, as a server in his tavern, oh. the most beautiful girl in the town. He groomed her, basically, uh, oh. just to become his mistress. And the girl was actually engaged to someone else, but she was like, damn, this real rich man is interested in me. I mean, <laughs> maybe take him for a few hundred bucks and then, like, we split, you know? Yeah. Um, Terrible idea. Yeah, definitely. So he basically started trying to seduce her, and eventually uh. she agreed, and her name was Madeline. And she gave in and was like, sure, let's do it. And they did. Frequently. Oh, they did it? They it. Did. <laughs> sure, let's do it. And they did. <laughs> um, oh. And, you know, she sort of kind of caught some feelings for him. And, you oh. know, they were just being gross and <laughs> etc. cetera. Um, and they thought that everything was fun and dandy. She was one of the most popular servers because she was beautiful and people tipped her really well. And, you know, everything was going great uh, until uh, Mrs. King found out what was going on. Now, Mrs. King was a crafty, just pissed off bitch. And I don't blame her because she's got a shitty husband, but uh, she took things a little too far. So, um, turns out that she decided that she wasn't going to allow any of this shit to go down in her household. And all of a sudden, Madeline just doesn't show up for work. She's uh -oh. not there anymore. Uh-oh. And nothing else is said about it. Just, she's gone. So, people in the town just sort of assumed that she often eloped with someone, um, and, you know, Mr. King just is walking around being all sad, trying to, like, hide from his wife that he's upset that his mistress has, has run off. But Miss King is like, hell yeah, that bitch ain't fucking my husband anymore. <laughs> um, but nothing oh. was known of the time what happened. There were no inklings of anything that happened. But... In 1930-ish, the house was undergoing some renovations. Uh-oh. So, I, I the house... Can I guess? Uh, no. Okay. The house was undergoing some renovations. They were fixing things up. Obviously, it was built in the 1700s, so they were shoring up some foundations. They were fixing some walls that had shifted. Uh, they, were, they were adding plumbing. They, yeah, actually. <laughs> some of that shit. Um, and they had gotten to the fireplaces, and they were trying to sort of fix the chimney, make it more modern, you know, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, and while the repair people were working on the fireplace in the main room of the tavern the repair folks found something really unexpected cemented into the back wall of the fireplace uh oh what was it shot in the dark oh wait 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 <clears throat> excuse me <clears throat> there we go go ahead was it a one desiccated body <laughs> was it b Two desiccated bodies, or was it C? Three desiccated bodies. Wait. Okay. I feel like I may have zoned out for a minute because I know about the baby in the inn and I know about the servant girl. Mm -hmm. Okay. But the baby wouldn't have been put in the wall. So who else was this bitch angry at? Or. Did she just find where everybody dumped bodies in the building? So, uh, with that being said, I'm going to go with one desiccated body. You're not correct. God damn it. Hold on. <clears throat> <clears throat> okay. Do you want me to take the shot instead of you? Nope. <laughs> I surely do not. <laughs> go ahead. 
Okay, it was three desiccated bodies. Mm, God damn it. So there's just like a burying place in this house. Yeah, apparently. Hmm. Um, so when they... Or a desiccation place. Uh, anyway, Ooh, they found... that's another great porno. The desiccation no, place. No, that sounds disgusting. Yeah. Um, so they found the three... The defecation place. You, no, that is probably a porno. That's almost definitely a porno. <laughs> that's so gross. At the very least, you could type it into Pornhub and find something. <laughs> Oh, gross. Anyway, um, so yes, they found three mummified bodies that were cemented into the walls of the fireplace. Mm. There was the body of two men and a young girl. Um, and so uh, in another fireplace in a mummified, separate room. Huh? Yeah. Ugh. In a separate room. And not like mummified like Egyptian, but just like mummified in the fact that like their bodies had dried out and they were preserved um, naturally, you know. Um, and so they found in another fireplace a dagger. So they assumed that it was like the murder weapon of all of these Ugh. bodies. Um, and so, you know, because the story existed of Madeline, uh, a lot of people believe that it was Madeline in the fireplace. And they're not sure who the other bodies belonged to. They thought maybe there were patrons that ended up dying or servants or something like that. But, you know, the folklore story is that Miss King likes off people that pissed her off and she'd just brick them up behind the fireplace when she wanted to, you know. Um, mm -hmm. So the fireplace in question is also known to become extremely hot. Um, even when there isn't a fire in the fireplace, it just sort of like gets fucking hot for no good reason um and they say that madeline is a very active spirit uh she appears like full body apparition to patrons to staff um and she apparently likes to walk on like wet floors that have just been mopped because that she likes to have her footprints show up uh -huh. so people will have like mopped a spill or whatever and, and she'll like, just foot, walk through it yeah and footprints will show up in the surface dirty it back up again uh-huh fucking hoe right Stay what a bitch. off the place i just mopped you can't. For <laughs> real. Um, anyway, and she also likes knocking things down. She'll uh, turn faucets on. She'll flick lights on and off. Uh, she likes to get the rocking chairs going um, that are on the porch areas. Um, you know, she's just like kind of a hoe. Yeah. Um, Who isn't these days, though? They, they Were those um, days? <laughs> Who wasn't those days? There we go. Um, they like, she likes to open and close doors. Um, there's like, you can like apparently call her name and a, a door opens, um, and you'll call her name again and a door will close behind you. What? Um, it's just, it's supposed to be super creepy and she's a very active and responsive spirit. Mm -hmm. Um, so there are a lot of stories from people that have worked there at the restaurant just you know, giving personal anecdotes about shit that have happened to them. And some of those are videos are fun. You can find some of that on YouTube as well. Hmm. Um, but it's really neat. Uh, but anyway, eventually, um, you know, the bad guys got uh, all wrangled up and the Natchez Trace was no longer a theme because Steamboat showed up. And, mm -hmm. you know, basically the tavern kind of went out of business because the economy was just no longer there to sort of support it. Yeah. Um, so Mr. King sold his uh, tavern to the Postlewaith family um, and they converted it uh, into a private residence and it remained in that family for 150 years. Uh, but in 1973, they sold the whole place to um, like a local... Uh, historical society and then I think mm -hmm. the historical society sold it to the people that own it now um, so like I said you can in fact go eat and apparently the chef's really good it's a fancy kind of restaurant there if oh. you want to um, at King's Tavern in Natchez uh, Mississippi and this place has actually also been on lots of the um, paranormal shows <laughs> it's been on one of my favorite shows which is the Haunted Collector mm. um, you've heard me talk about the haunted collector maybe the haunted collector is just this guy that's like uh he goes to people's houses a lot and stuff like that this was a little bit more high profile of a case 
than the ones that he usually goes to. But he usually goes to like a personal residence and he investigates and they end up finding some old antique that's definitely haunted. And he's like, yeah, this is what's haunted in your household. I can bring it into my museum of haunted items. So it'll no longer be haunting you. And it's never like that post-it note in the corner. It's always like that antique Mm. revolver that he's taking with him. Yeah, this was an early episode. I remember we talked about this. Yeah, so uh, he's... He's been there, the haunted collector, and Ghost Adventures, which it's a fucking hilarious episode because it's it just is. Go watch it. Why? Give me reasons. Just because Ghost Adventures is fucking ridiculous. That whole thing. Like, I don't watch it because I think they're actually good at what they do. I watch it because they're just fucking ridiculous to each other. Um, yeah, I like that one. Well, okay, I need more reasons. You just why it's have so to funny. go fucking watch it. I don't wanna. I want you to tell me. I'm not going to tell it and okay. ruin everybody. Um, but ruin anyway, every- <laughs> ruin everybody for that particular episode. Okay. But um, Spoilers. They have lots of photos of shadowy figures and stuff that get taken. Lots of EVP recordings of Madeline. Um, and there's also another ghost that I don't think anyone's ever really named. Uh, but he shows up in a lot of photographs. And he's this really tall guy. That wears a black sort of suit jacket and a top hat. Mm. Um, and the mediums that have gone through and talked about him say that he's like real angry and sort of a sinister kind of character. Mm. Um, and he likes to show up when people are posing in front of the fireplace where like the bodies were found. And mm. he likes to sort of toss things around occasionally Um, and people say that they'll sort of see a tall man out of the corner of their eyes and he kind of gives them sort of like chest pains and like sort of throat swelling pressure and just kind of like real ooh fuck off vibes you know it's Lincoln isn't it what it's Abraham Lincoln isn't it no (laughs) tall guy top hat black overcoat I don't sounds like Lincoln you know more than Abraham Lincoln used to wear a top hat, right? Well, that's that's the big one, though. That's the big one, Leah. <laughs> okay. So we're going to rewrite history, and it's yeah. Abraham Lincoln. Yeah. He's from no. Natchez, originally. Uh, I they don't had their log so. cabin there. I think Illinois would be real pissed off to yeah. hear that. But, uh, that's a anyway. whole thing. So, yeah. Um, basically, that is is the, the Ghosts of the King's Tavern in Natchez, Mississippi. Lots of banditry and uh, assholery and uh, skullduggery. That's a good one. Yeah, that is a good one because skulls were literally dug up there. That's true. In the there walls. Were three of them. Abraham Lincoln's was one of them. That is not accurate. The U.S. government hid it in Natchez, Mississippi because who's fucking going there? <laughs> Perfect place for a conspiracy. Lots of people. It's a nice town. Yeah. I mean, you know, at the time, I mean, it was 1860. It's Natchez, Mississippi. Who's fucking going? But now there's King's Tavern. So yeah. obviously we'd go. Yeah. And we would find the I would actually really Lincoln. like to go just because there's there are actually lots of other places around there. But it's supposed to be very lovely. And the restaurant's supposed to be really nice. So I'd go once we get off quarantine. <laughs> that I mean, could be a while. Like we have a trip scheduled in June. Yeah for our anniversary that i'm almost positive we're not going on so which i don't think we have the leave time to go on now anyway well it depends on if i have the rona or not but anyway um so yeah let's just go to natchez for a weekend yeah it could be fun make a weekend out of it yep i mean we'll eat once or twice at king's tavern and and call it a day right you can find their uh a menu on their website it looks kind of fun i'm not lots that interested of, lots of fancy southern farm to table kind of situation going on if i'm not going i'm not i'm not gonna look at the menu i like looking at menus though i know because you're a fucking weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> makes me think about things that i want to cook at home yeah like you look at stuff I, this happens every once in a while you'll look at stuff and be like look at this what this restaurant has and you're like okay i'm gonna go make a bowl of cereal <laughs> Well, shit, that's a letdown. <laughs> that is true. I do that a lot. It happens a lot. I'm well, hungry now. I'm going to have some ice cream. Yeah, no, it's the thing, though. We just don't have any of the fucking ingredients because we're on goddamn lockdown. Yeah, so. we don't have fucking farm fresh eggs. Get out of here. <laughs> we have the eggs that were left over because they were the expensive ones that no one wanted to grab yeah, when the pandemic started. We have a dozen organic eggs in the fridge. And Never brown. thought that would happen. Which, by the way, aren't all eggs fucking organic? 
Just FYI. Yes. Fucking shit. Is it related to the chickens only eat organic things or or what? Uh, How do you have organic stuff that is by definition organic? But uh, we're not getting in that. But anyway, I think they're also cage free eggs, which it was three dollars and 50 cents for a dozen is all I'm saying. (laughs) It was too much for eggs. We normally go to Walmart and there's like a. there's got to be a, a farm close by the, to our Walmart because you can get literally four dozen eggs for about two bucks most days yeah. at Walmart in, in Hartzell here. Not but, right now. But no, like it's it's seriously a box of four dozen eggs. Yeah, it's great. That's we about that two lot. to three dollars any given day. But then they're out because yeah. for some reason, I'm, I'm not getting into it. Everybody else has fucking done it already. Everybody bought everything. I walked into the store and all the fucking squash was gone. <laughs> Why? <laughs> like, how much during a pandemic do you need squash? All the I would potatoes love some were squash gone. Squash right now. Like at at most, you need some six zucchini? potatoes. Fuck yeah, six potatoes at most to keep in your. Pantry. I bought a whole bag of potatoes. Yeah. Okay. But I mean, like, uh, anyway, you're right. You're right. I'm stupid. <laughs> Nobody needs that much squash. All the fucking bananas were left, which oh, yeah. bananas would be extremely beneficial to have during yeah. this type I of thing. I made banana bread. It was great. Yeah. I'm just saying, I fucking hate people. Every one of you, <laughs> fuck off. If that you bought all the true. eggs so that I had to buy a dozen organic eggs, which we still haven't even tried. No, I don't even know actually, if they're any good. Um, I, u- I think I used uh, some of those eggs in the cookies that I made the other day. Oh, okay. That explains why they were so delicious. Then. I've been baking, because what else the fuck am I going to do? Leah, you haven't been baking. You baked once. I made bread, I made banana bread, and I made <laughs> fucking cookies. No, what do you right. want from me? I forgot you made pesto bread because the dogs ate half of it. I yeah, forgot about that. They knocked the other half of the loaf off the counter yeah. and ate it. It made no, me real mad. they licked it enough to be like, oh, this kind of sucks. And then, they because we fucking loved it. We ate it with some soup. It was soup. really good. It was the first time I'd ever made like a yeasted, like, from scratch pesto, bread. Though. There it was, was so pesto good. in it. It was yeah. like it was like cinnamon rolls, I braided rolls, a but ribbon pesto. of pesto through it. It was oh, really good. Oh, it was so good. And the dogs were like, oh, this sucks. <laughs> like, the other day I was making a, a burrito or something, and I dropped a, a jalapeno. And I didn't notice for a second. And our big dog... Came up to my feet and started licking, and I went, what are you doing? And I looked down, and half the pepper was gone, and she was, like, walking away, going, oh, no, that fucking sucked. (laughs) I didn't like that at all. Yeah, drop something worth a shit. Drop an organic egg down here. (laughs) And I don't know if y'all have noticed where you're at, but, like, seriously, the expensive shit is still on the shelf. Everything that's cheap is gone. Yeah. It's like that, uh, uh... There was a famous picture that circulated the internet after, uh, was it Hurricane Harvey? The one that decimated Houston? Yeah, that was Harvey. Right. And people were walking through, uh, there was a, walking through the grocery store and there was a famous picture of the entire organic section was still there, but everything else was gone. Yeah. Because even in a pandemic... Everybody's or any like, kind we of thing. can't afford this shit. Yeah. Like, I bet you could walk to, not walk, drive to the Whole Foods yeah. in Huntsville and just be all like, oh, everything's still here because nobody can afford this shit. Well, I don't know if y'all have ever tried it, but organic stuff does not taste good. Some of it does. Some of it doesn't. It just depends on what brand it is and all mm-hmm. that stuff. But um, yeah. it's just more cost for literally nothing. Yeah. People are scared. The of way they regulate things nothing. is is not like it, that. You could just call it that, and it mm. might not be anything special. So, anyway, yeah. enough of me talking about grocery store problems. And, and again, I literally haven't gotten to go to the grocery store in two weeks. Um, again, eggs, by definition, are organic. I want to say that right Anything now. that's uh, like a carbon-based something is organic. Right. But Fuck anyway. you. <laughs> you just slap organic on it and go, four bucks. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, um... Yeah, so uh, here's a toast. Are you ready for it? No, not not really. It's not great. Oh, well then, yeah, I'm absolutely (laughs) ready. (laughs) Hit me with it. Okay. The headless ghost in Chapel Hill sounds a lot like that ghost in Gurdon. Walking the rails with only his lamp will be his eternal burden. Hmm. If you don't want to find three bodies in a wall, don't buy a 200-year-old tavern at all. Drink. 
Oh, that was it? Yeah, that's it. Oh, fuck off, Leah. <laughs> Do better. Try again. I rhymed Gurdon and Burden. That's fun. That yeah, wasn't bad. Okay, well, that's enough. I'm sorry. That's enough. Y'all, thank you for being here. Um, what are we going to do for Monster Madness this week? Um, I guess we're going to reveal who won, and mm-hmm. we're going to draw for the prize pack, and we're going to email whoever won the prize pack and ask for a t-shirt size, and we'll get that stuff uh, ordered and sent to your home. Um, well, and we would obviously need that person's address as well, right. but other than that... um. Since it's shipping from not our house, yeah. uh, we can do that. And then I'll send the um, stickers after we've verified that I'm Rona free. Yeah. So after we've disinfected them. Yeah. So um, we'll just, you know, do that and that'll be fun. Well, are we going to live stream or anything? I don't think so. Or, no, um, okay. probably not because I uh, haven't dressed up in a very long time. <laughs> um, and because my hair is a little crazy. Like it right now. <laughs> and I have a feeling that I'm probably not going to feel like it then either. So yeah. we'll just record a regular one and, uh, Y'all tune in to find out who wins. I'm all for um, it. And then, you know, uh, it'll be great. It'll be wonderful. and uh, It'll be dandy. Yeah. And hopefully next year, there will actually be March Madness stuff going on at the yeah. same time as this. So it makes a little more sense. Yeah, it was planned ahead of time. Like, yeah. kind of like... Uh, we did. We were watching The Masked Singer the other day. Yeah. And they did a whole joke thing about how this is your real March Madness or something. And it was like, you could tell this was recorded in like November. Oh, cause yeah, I was say, cause like the day before, or maybe like two days before we were watching it, like they had just canceled everything. Yeah. Oh no, it was a couple weeks after oh. the air date of that episode was I, keep in mind, Leah, they canceled the NCAA tournament like almost a month ago. Jesus, it I, everything has squished together, and I don't know what's going on yeah. anymore. I'm sorry. They canceled all college championships at the beginning of March. Yeah. I've been playing um, Animal Crossing, and it's just one big old Animal Crossing day now. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know what time it is. I've been playing Civilization VI. Same thing. Yeah. I won a game yesterday. took me seven hours. That's right. I spent all day doing that. I've paid off like, school's two, not in. Nothing's yeah. happening. I've paid off two mortgages uh, in in Animal Crossing, and I'm working on a third one to Jesus. build a bigger house. You're um, such a nerd. Yeah. So I, I caught a coelacanth <laughs> the other day. Do you know how Ooh. fucking rare a coelacanth is? Hell Probably yeah. not that rare. <laughs> Very rare. Actually, it has to be raining for you to catch it, and you have to catch it off the pier. Anyway. <laughs> I caught a coelacanth from my museum. I'm super pumped oh. about it. I caught two oarfish. Like, what the fuck? You're such a nerd. Yes. All right, y'all. That's enough. <laughs> Sorry. That's enough. Thank y'all so much for listening. Uh, we hope that we can continue to uh, to provide entertainment throughout the, this shutdown because it's not... It doesn't cost us anything to do the show, so except for beer, which we'll, well be out of within a month. Beer and server space, so. which we do have to like renew. Yeah, but that's at coming any up rate, soon. Yeah. Oh shit, that's coming up soon. I got to check and see what card that's under. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. Okay. Um, well, thank y'all very much for listening. Find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Southern Spirits Podcast. You will find us there. Join the Patreon, patreon.com slash Southern Spirits Podcast. Listen to Trailer Trashy, the other show on our network. Um, send us any fun stuff like mail, which we haven't been to the mailbox in a while because... We can't leave the house. There you go. But uh, send that to P.O. Box 1743 Hartsell, Alabama. That's H-A-R-T-S-E-L-L-E 35640. I believe that's everything, Leah. Did I miss something? No, that's everything. All right, y'all. Well, we will see you next time. Bye, y'all.